What's up, everyone? Welcome to Unscripted Access, episode 167. I am your host, John Necluso, here with Mr. Anthony Ta. Hi. How you doing, Anthony? How was your weekend? It has been a long week, so I am very happy it is the weekend. But unfortunately for all of our yeah, listeners that are listening happy. to this on a Monday, I apologize. Because <laughs> this episode... We can only I... hope... To make your week start better than uh, than ours probably will, because we we don't get the chance to listen to ourselves. I mean, we do, but it's not it. as and enjoyable. We love it. We listen to ourselves, but not as much as you guys voices, do. Hopefully, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Brent is right. not here. So, he oh. got called into work, so um, just the two of us here. For tonight. Yes, the two of us. Tonight. Yes, you guys you guys have to deal with no puns, no perversion, and no uh anything else that Bremen does. Yeah, we lost twenty percent <laughs> of our audience right there. <laughs> <sighs> Man, we need that well, audience. Anyways, um Yeah, damn. All right, so yeah, what do we got um, this week, Anthony? Well, what we got this week? Well, there's actually some kind of big stuff kind of happening. Probably the biggest thing that I saw is uh, Lionhead Studios, Peter Molyneux's thing with Microsoft. Uh huh. They're gone. Um, or yep, they're not done. gone. They're uh, not. They're not gone, but maybe it's like proposed closure, which is almost pretty much saying, yeah, they're gone at this point. Because Fable Legends has been cancelled, so the studio itself is probably in really deep jeopardy at the moment. Yeah, so sorry all you uh, Fable fans out there, but that game is, is no longer c- going to see the light of day. I think it's kind of re- it's kind of like one of those franchises that I think has had good expectations, didn't meet those expectations, sat in limbo for a really long time, and now is no longer cared about nor remembered by mm-hmm. the gaming world. This is not like a case of F Zero where the fans are like, "Where's our F Zero already?" This is a case of, yeah, that was a franchise that had big dreams, big hopes, big promises, didn't deliver them, got left mm-hmm. behind, and now it's gonna die. Yep. Yeah, that's uh, you know, it's a shame because I don't like seeing anybody ha- anybody go through like losing their job or anything like that. But it's something that. While I didn't see coming, I wasn't surprised to see it happen. You know. You mentioned losing jobs. You know what? The, you know what? The, you know what's kind of really funny out of all this? Sony is holding a job fair in that city for Lionhead Studio developers. That's good. <laughs> uh, so That's awesome. you know, Sony's initiating plans to take over the world. So mm-hmm. or I should say PlayStation specifically. PlayStation is uh, continuing their plans to take over the world for 2016. Um, and they're starting <laughs> by taking over Microsoft's territory. Or, I wouldn't call it poaching. Poaching is not the right word. So when you... Uh, I think is monopolizing anyway, so, is a good yeah. word. Huh? Monopolizing. Yeah, they could be monopolizing at this point. When you see Skynet come out and it's PlayStation 5's interface, then you know. No, Skynet would be that giant, like, freaking, what was it? Uh, I should say, do you know the game Go? And I don't believe I do. Okay, so it's a game that not many, it's not like a game that the, the, the common average person knows about. But, so, like, obviously we know what chess is. Go is, like, way up there. I don't even know how that game works, but I knew a couple people in college that played Go. And it's one of, like, one of those really high level thinking kind of board games so complex that there used to be no computer that could could um solve nobody there, there was no computer for a long time that could challenge and beat a, go, a human go player because of how many situations there could be so you can't solve with brute force well if skynet were to be a thing mm-hmm. i would propose the candidate be that uh that uh what's it called that alpha go computer that Google made that oh, beat, Google. that beat one of the world's top Go players, and this hasn't happened before. Okay, if I were to propose a Skynet, that thing would be it, like more than Watson at this point. Nothing is powered by 
uh, I don't know, a mere few thousand CPUs and a couple thousand GPUs. I don't, okay, know where they, huh. I don't know where they got the money, so don't ask me. <laughs> Even the guy. Well, I'd much I also, rather. I also, it sounds like. Good. I also would propose. I also propose this computer to be a candidate for Skynet because even the guys who made it say we would, did not know what this thing was going to do in the game. So the people who made it don't even know what it was going to do. <laughs> so there you go, Skynet. <laughs> if you don't know I, what your computer is like doing, much I rather, think that's worrying. I would much rather be ruled... Well, okay, sorry. Uh, I would much rather be ruled by... A computer that can whoop my butt at at a game than ruled by someone with a voice of Siri. Uh, well, I uh, well, you well, be thankful it is Google, so you can't attach Siri to it. <laughs> you just have a voice, which I don't think sounds as creepy. Mm, you, well, yeah, that's right. Now, nah, just give her the voice of Cortana. Oh. Just give that. Give just give Skynet the voice of Cortana. That's the best of all voices. A point for Microsoft Phone. <laughs> Oh man! But yeah, well, Microsoft has Cortana, right? Yes, Microsoft does have Cortana, and um, th this may be a little political, but I'll just say I don't have Cortana turned on my computer because the number of checkboxes you have to say yes to in order to turn Cortana on, I think, is a little ridiculous. So I don't use Cortana because they have to know everything about you, what you're typing, your location, uh, know this, know this, know this. I'm just like, wow, do you do the like it takes this many checkboxes to make Cortana work, really? So I don't. <laughs> use, so I don't use Cortana because there you go. Attach Cortana to that giant AlphaGo computer, and wabam, Skynet with a pretty voice. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe with Microsoft Hololens, Skynet will become a really attractive woman, so people will have no problem saying, "Okay." It's true because marketing and. Yeah. See, I'm envisioning a really terrible world right now <laughs> with all these proposals <laughs> of making this future Skynet less terrifying. Unfortunately, it could always be worse. It could always be worse. Yes, the most optimistic situ the most optimistic view to any terrible situation. It could be worse, I guess. <laughs> I guess. And it always gets worse when you say that. Yeah, and it always gets worse when you say that. Because Murphy will find a way. Yep. <laughs> but anyways, yeah, uh, Lionhead Studios. Yeah, Fable, the Xbox, um, Xbox and Xbox 360 thing. Such such great dreams, such great hope, such horrible disappointment. Oh yeah. I think, I, think I remember I played Fable three, or at least a demo of it for a little bit back when game demos were actually a thing, and um. Kind of, I found it kind of okay. It was a little easy for me to get lost in worlds that big sometimes. So, um, but yeah, like they, I think like when when I think Lionhead Studios nowadays and Peter Mellon, I just think yeah, Kotaka did that interview and yeah, Peter Mellon just felt really sad about everything that kind of happened with the whole Fable stuff and you know how it didn't live up to expectations that kind of stuff. Yeah, I think I I hadn't. The only good Fable game that I played was the first one. I wasn't a big fan of any other one that came after that. I think the third one was one you can choose to be, like, you you would become a king or something like that, and then they just screwed it up really bad because it was, like, a really black and white option, I think. Um, yeah. But, yeah, it was that. Huh. Yeah, I'm not really surprised. Like, just like, oh, Fable. Uh, like, even when I was at E3 and I saw the trailer for Fable, I'm just like, I don't care. And that's just kind of like the stigma that franchise will have to live with for the rest of its life because, or for for our past many years, because it's like, oh, it's going to be a Fable. Oh, it would just be a massive disappointment. Oh, it's going to suck. Oh, it's another Peter Molyneux game, even though Peter Molyneux is not with that studio for a long time now. It just it just has a stigma. It's just like you see a name and you immediately associate it with Fable Three, mm -hmm. and that's it. And it kind of yeah. sucks, but that's just kind of how per that's just how people's perceptions work. So it's kind of it's really unfortunate for Fable at this point. Maybe they should like 
Maybe they should have like done something else instead of pushing Fable forwards because Fable is probably best known among like older gaming audiences who actually know what it is and what it did do and what yeah. it couldn't do. So yeah, uh, I think yeah. Fable's Fable will always be known as the game that promised a lot but didn't deliver. Well, well, I do say Pure Mountain was really good at marketing. If you managed to convince that many people into it. It was just the game itself didn't live up to that hype. It, it yeah. was a bu- it was a bubble that popped. That, that like that's the hype bubble. I like to call it the hype bubble, and I knew what the hype bubble is because when the hype gets so ridiculous, you either will meet expectations, which is Star Wars: The Force Awakens, or the bubble pops and everyone just gets really angry, such as any failed big hyped up game release that you know that people were looking forward to and it just didn't live up to it mm-hmm. so um yeah so lionhead is pretty much facing possible closure now because well that's all that's pretty much mostly what they're known for is fable so um, i don't know yeah. if i start anything else but sony is like hey job fair yeah yeah because they're gonna take over the world starting may it was supposed to be April, but they decided to postpone it. <laughs> <laughs> Nintendo was enjoying a pretty good beginning of 2016, I must admit. Oh yeah, definitely. Mostly. Aside from a really entertaining news story that I just remembered now that I brought up Nintendo. But like starting in May, Sony's taken over the world. So, well, yeah, that and the Master Race, of course. Yeah, always I cannot, the Master Race. I cannot forget the Master Race because for all I know, they could be <laughs> holding a knife at my throat at this point if I don't mention that. <laughs> um but yeah so that's fable it's a shame though because i'm pretty sure a lot of people there were they like they stayed with a studio whose name is not very popular so you know, i'm pretty sure they have some passion because you stayed with a studio that's not known for you know that many great things but and now it shuts down and you could potentially lose your job or have already lost your job yeah and yeah, gaming industry is kind of hard to. Gaming industry, I feel like, is a little hard to get into sometimes, even if you're a programmer, because of how many people actually want to get into it. So yeah. All yeah right. Well, unfortunate for those looking forward to that one. Uh, what else you got? Okay, so what else do I got? So, um. I did mention Nintendo, so I might as well go with that. Mm-hmm. So, all right. So, John, you have a new. Uh, you have a new what's it called? The Nintendo New 3DS uh-huh. XL. Congratulations! In the future, you will be able to play Super Nintendo games via Virtual Console on it. Ah, uh, yes, yes. Now, I have the regular sized Nintendo 3DS. I will not be able to play Super Nintendo games on it. I had no idea that it was strictly for the new 3DS. I had no idea it was that bleeping hard to get freaking Super Nintendo games on to run on a 3DS. That's kind of sketchy. <laughs> I think the reason I read was Nintendo was like, well, we want it for like quality reasons and performance reasons. Uh, now, and, he, and you know what I say? I say BS. Okay, and here's why. Bronson bought the 3DS on launch day. The thing was, the thing at the time it costed two hundred and fifty dollars. Now, about like uh, five months after that, Nintendo price cut it down to uh, I think one seventy, which made a lot of early adopters unhappy. So what Nintendo did huh? was they had an ambassador program where they gave out various Game Boy Advance. Oh wait, hang on, it wasn't Super Nintendo games? About oh, they gave out Game Boy Advance games. Um for free as part of the ambassador program now i don't know about you but i sometimes sit down and i think that game boy advance is a lot like a super a portable super nintendo in terms of the fact they still use a surprise the fact that a lot of games with super nintendo have been ported up Mm -hmm. to game boy advance so you know there's that not to mention that in the world where emulation is a very popular thing super nintendo emulators have been running on just about anything from toasters to high-end computers is yeah. it really that hard to get a dual core ARM processor to run freaking Super Nintendo games? And why do you? It does it only have to be on the new 3DS? I mean, like it's sketchy shit. Like, like shit. Not like it this is, is definitely is just, sketchy. Yeah, and <laughs> and Facebook, and I read some 
comments on Facebook, yeah, a lot of people are calling BS on this stuff. Because let's be honest, is it really that hard to run a Super Nintendo these days on just about anything? No, no. Freaking, I had I had like a Pentium Four laptop from like that was made in two thousand four, and that thing ran Super Nintendo emulator just fine. Played Fire Emblem just fine. Or was no way that was a Game Boy Advance emulator. But anyways, the Game Boy Advance, yeah, there you go. Yeah, it can't be that hard to emulate Super Nintendo. <laughs> So that's the BS news story of the week. Not to mention, this just kind of goes oh, back to um, the whole. This kind of goes back to the whole. What has Nintendo been doing all this time? We're gonna bring some Super Nintendo games, but we're gonna only bring the weird ones that make no sense. We finally brought you Pokemon after many, many years because we want to make sure the quality of Pokemon Red runs as perfectly and as originally as possible. With the exception of screwed up save files removed. <laughs> well, I mean, in their defense, like the the NES games that they have out, out right now are pretty sweet, and the ones that they're going to have in the future are good too. Like currently, they have Super Mario World, Super Mario Three. Um, I think they have F Zero, but. It- in the future, they're gonna have like Earthbound and A Link to the Past, so it'll it'll get better eventually. What sucks is that if you've already purchased them on Wii U, you have to buy them again. That's <laughs> what that's the biggest thing about it. I don't like. Cross buy can be a great thing. Yeah, right here get on both platforms. If only that kind of stuff <laughs> could work so beautifully. Like you know, I could imagine Microsoft. If Microsoft could do something like. Uh, hey, buy it on Xbox One. Get it both on Xbox One and PC. But then at that point, that would sort mm-hmm. of defeat the purpose that, of owning an Xbox rad. One. But that would kind of defeat the purpose of owning yeah. an Xbox <laughs> One to start with when you have a PC that's more powerful. Yeah. No one would own a, an Xbox One. <laughs> People aren't really buying them right now either. I mean, There's it's not like Wii U bad. It's not like one. Wii U bad, but the PS4 is pretty much dominating the list. Which hey, segue to the next news story. <laughs> this is a spoiler alert to everybody. Spoiler alert, everybody. <laughs> Guess what? PlayStation 4 sold a lot and was tops in February. Hey, guess what, John? What's that? I predict that this month PlayStation 4 will be the top selling console. Calling it now. I won't bet against you on that one. <laughs> it is. It's like, is there anything new these days? It's just kind of like PlayStation 4 sold tops again. I'm like, well, duh. One, the Wii U is pretty much never going to catch them, no matter how hard they try. And, oh, sorry, Nintendo, the Wii U is pretty much getting close to the end of its life now. I can't save it at this point. Xbox, well, what is there on <laughs> Xbox? Oh, I could get that on PC too. Um, it's literally just Halo and Forza. That's it. And like, even like, Forza is coming to PC. Forza is coming to PC. Yeah, uh, right. Not 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 like yeah. full not like full on Forza Motorsport six, but kind of more like a smaller uh, project of trying to test how Forza will work on um, PC exclusively through Windows Store. <sighs> <laughs> Yeah, some of this stuff, like here's the Ultimate Edition, you get it through the Windows Store. So, you know, yeah, it's like they're trying, they're they're appifying Windows again, except in a different way. Just not as jarring as it was in Windows 8 when they literally screwed up your entire, like, start menu and became the start screen. <laughs> Which is god also, awful. Also, Windows 10 updates, the... There, there isn't going to be a Windows 11 for a real long time. They're, they're doing system update. They basically are treating Windows 10 updates now like system updates. So, like, you know, if you're familiar with system updating your phone or your Xbox or your PS4, because they're doing that. With, they're starting to do that with Windows now. Oh, interesting. Appification, appification of your electronics. Um, but yeah. Uh, yeah, PlayStation 4 is tops again. Your your great is up, and overall hardware sales. Hmm. I'm not reading this right. Seventh gen consoles, your PS3 and 360. Oh yeah, that that they're pretty much gone now. They're, they've fallen off the cliff in terms of sales because everyone's moving on to new yeah. stuff. Okay, so oh, uh, let's see. 
Maybe I should be reading this stuff out before I uh, talk about it. Okay. So, PS4 is no surprise. Alright, here's something you probably did not know. Would you like to know the top 10 games that sold last month, according to the NPD? That's definitely. Of course, the number I'm one gonna is... I'm going to take a guess. I'm going to take a guess, Anthony. Yes. I'm trying to think. I'm trying to run through the month of February, right? Yes. Oh, uh, what well, crap. I'm going to... Uh, that's, that's actually kind of a hard guess. I don't know. Go for it. Okay. So, starting at the top <laughs> is Far Cry Primal. Oh, was, shit. Yeah, yeah. I thought... I was going off the PC release for that, which was like March 1st. That's why I didn't say it, because that's what I was thinking. And I was thinking, wait, that probably... Yeah, it is a Far Cry Primal, which for me actually <laughs> isn't too much of a surprise, because I saw a lot of commercials for that game a few days before it came out. Like yeah, it's commercials. Pretty good game. Um, okay, so moving from number two downwards, Black Ops Three is still selling a lot. Grand Theft Auto Five is still sell. How? Okay, Grand Theft Auto Five still selling a lot. Uh, number four is Naruto Shippuden Ultimate Ninja Storm. Ultimate Ninja Storm Four. Oh, interesting. And the next one is NBK- NBA Two K Sixteen. Good. Yes. Actually, I'm not surprised because it's the thick of basketball season right now. Yeah. Which, by the way, watching Stephen Curry play is like, um... Uh, did he study physics in college? Because there's really no other way I could understand how that guy nails shots like that. Because it's like, you must have... Yeah, like, how, I don't... How do you figure out the perfect amount of force to apply to the basketball, the, the exact angle, and then know how to... And it doesn't even just, like bounce on the rim and then goes in it just flushes right through and i'm just like how did this guy study physics it has to go it's like what it's like watching a video game sometimes when it's like stiff and curry okay video mm-hmm. game mode is now active watch yeah he's a freak <laughs> i mean oh my goodness like really they're like really good basketball players and then there's there's Stephen curry and then i'm just like okay right <laughs> like Golden State, it, really good team. Then Stephen Curry just makes it unreal. All right, so that's my yeah, he's, basketball he's side. That's my basketball set, uh, tidbit. Uh, moving down the list, Lego Marvel's Adventures. Okay, Street Fighter Five. Hmm. A lot of people bought an unfinished game. Early access sells pretty well. It's interesting that that's uh, that that's not near the top. Well. I- Actually, no, it's not because that one's only for PlayStation. Never mind. It's only for PlayStation. Well, and PC. it's PlayStation. Yeah, PlayStation and PC, and also uh, Street Fighter. Like fighting games tend to have a more niche audience. Street Fighter is like the biggest of that ni- of game in that niche audience, but it's still pretty niche. Yeah, not fair um, enough. Moving down the list at number uh, eight is Minecraft. Okay, number nine, Fire Emblem Fates Birthright. Nice. I think it's a little. I think that's a little disappointing for me because it's like, uh, I thought it would be a little higher. Yeah. Also, I know I agree with you. Like, it's it's better than all those other games you named. I do. I think I should mention that the name of the game specifically says Birthright. It didn't say Birthright and Conquest put together. So usually when they say Pokemon X and Y, they usually put the two... Well, actually, on the sales chart, they're two different games, so they count separately, but if you put them together, they go way higher up the list. Mm-hmm. I'm actually looking forward to doing playing through Conquest and Revelations, because apparently it's, like, very different stories. So it's like, hey, you get three games. Almost. Sort of. Kind of. <laughs> and at number 10 is Fallout 4, which I'm not really too surprised. Yeah. Cool. I mean, uh, uh, most of those games on that list are really, really good. Yes. Actually, to be honest, it's like, yeah, the biggest probably. surprise for me on this list is like, how is Grand Theft Auto V still at number three? I mean, it's like, the game came out like two and a half years ago, and then they did some remakes 
they re they re, they redid it for PS3 and Xbox One, and then they redid it again for the PC. And look, people are still buying. How many people do Pretty not crazy. own Red Theft Auto Five? Like seriously. Uh, other NPD things, hardware sales. So like total hardware sales, as far as I guess this counts the Vita and 3DS put together also. Um, down 26% over the same period last year. So while PlayStation 4 is still selling like crazy, all the other consoles are not exactly selling as crazy as they did last year. But that being said, the PS4 is like reporting stronger year over year sales. More people are joining the cult in stronger numbers every <laughs> year. Oh boy, isn't that scary? Taking over the world. As it should be. Yeah, last gen consoles have pretty much crashed down, so nobody's really buying PS3s or Xbox 360s anymore, which makes sense. Microsoft's not really doing a great job at supporting Xbox One, so why would you buy a 360? <laughs> <laughs> and PS3, well, yeah, at this point, it's on its way out. So that's the NPD numbers for um month of February, at least. February. Uh, NPD numbers don't count digital sales, though, so who knows what actually did sell very well. Okay, so hey, John, EverQuest. Ah, another, uh, another game that gets cancelled. Yep, EverQuest next, that game that supposedly they're saying you can have, like, fully destructive environments. Uh, yeah, cancelled. After however many years and millions of dollars got drowned in that project. Yeah. That's another another bummer for people. I know uh, a few people who were very excited for that game. I was thinking like it would be like it could it has the potential to become a fantastic alternative to World of Warcraft and Final Fantasy fourteen and whatever other MMOs out there. Um but they canceled it. Uh, the reason it was canceled was Daybreak Games, which used to be called Sony Online Entertainment, says that the gameplay was not fun and it would not meet expectations. That's as good. Uh, that's as good a reason as you're, you're probably ever gonna get. <laughs> Uh, I read the comments section for this kind of stuff, and a lot of people seem to agree to the consensus that uh, it's not going to be fun. Yo, you're being paid to make it fun, which I'm inclined to do, to agree with. Yeah. Uh, usually games get canceled because potential audience is just not good enough, or it's kind of obvious that the game... Is not going to recoup the cost if you keep pushing it to release, so you cancel it. Like no, no future. In this case, the only reason why um, the guy said it wasn't fun and it would not meet the expectations associated with the franchise. I don't know about you, but I don't think a lot of people have have that many expectations about EverQuest because a lot of us don't really remember it. Other than it was. Even though all we remember is that it's the pioneer of MMOs and that it was ridiculously hard to get anywhere. <laughs> yeah, so, I actually never ended up playing it. So, so if you want to play EverQuest, well, there's uh, still expansions coming out to EverQuest 2. No, it's something. Scratch your Everqu EverQuest MMO itch. Yeah. Shame though. I was thinking, uh huh. I was, maybe I'll try it out and see what EverQuest is like. But it's been so long now; it's almost twenty years since. Uh, yeah, Jesus. How old is that? Sometimes I sit here and I'm like, oh, the nineties, the late nineties wasn't that long ago. Oh wow, it was that long ago. <laughs> We're closer to twenty twenty than twenty ten, John. How do you feel? Oh, that's crazy. I feel How old. do you feel? It's like your perception of time. Just get stuck after high school. <laughs> yeah. That's awful. It's got awful. Yeah. So that's EverQuest right there. Hey. I'm looking forward to Hitman this year. Turns out the game's oh, coming yes. out. Turns out this is one of those Square Enix decisions where they decide to put the game out episodically. 
Yeah, I and just I'm saying saw that, this as I clench my teeth in dissatisfaction. I just saw mm. that episode one is already out. Yes, and I'm just like, how do you? Do- no. So there's a good thing and a bad thing to that. And I, I was thinking about this earlier because I went on Steam because one of the games on my wish list is finally on sale. And I, I got a little ad saying that Hitman Part 1 is available. And I, I'm thinking, okay, well, I I knew this was going to be in parts, but I didn't think it was going to come out so soon. And then I looked at the price and it was only $15. But now I'm curious as to how much is in that $15 investment. How many parts are there? Because if there's five, then you just get more than $60 for your game. Exactly. See, this is why I think, you know, this is just kind of be like, hey, I mean, think about it. At least the initial cost isn't going to bite your wallet like crazy. But here's the thing. I'm the kind of person who thinks long-term cost. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, like financing. I'm sure we all enjoy the world of financing, whether it's your credit card or financing a new car or getting a mortgage on a new home. I'm sure that we all are familiar with the world of financing and interest rates. Yeah. <laughs> Long-term Too familiar. cost. Long-term cost. The initial cost is not going to like tear your wallet, light it on fire, and leave you on the streets instantly, but it's doing it over time instead and more expensively. Because it's like, oh, it's only $15. Oh, come on. It's just $15. How can that be? You, you, all you need to do is work for like two hours today. And what well, see, you just paid it off. Well, yeah, but get, but I'm used to my game, used to my games being $60. And what I'm seeing here is a uh, $75 game. That's coming out in little pieces. Well, so how many parts is it supposed to be? Do you know? I have no idea, but if it's five... That's a seventy-five dollar game. Yeah. Now, as you can imagine, I know I know this is I like they're saying Final Fantasy VII is going to be episodic. I don't know about you, but I tend to know that RPG people tend to play games in big, giant chunks at a time. Yeah. Okay, it, like big chunks at a time. Like I know there will be people out there who are going to want to play Final Fantasy VII in as in as few sittings as possible because you know got to get through it, but episodic Final Fantasy 7 is not going to work out great. It's also really hard to stay excited about the game when I feel it's episodic because you're constantly getting excited and it has to stop and getting excited and then stop and then go and then stop. That constant stop-go is just going to be like... I think it kind of tarnishes how you will feel about the game because it's in pieces and you have to remember how you felt about the previous episode mm-hmm. while continuing on to new episode. And you have to remember what happened in the previous episode too. It, it's like playing a game like a quarter of the way through and then you don't play it for two months and then come back and you're like, oh, wait, what ha- Oh, that's what happened. But anyway, yeah. I was talking about uh, Hitman because uh, um, usually when this episodic stuff happens, you usually shove everything into one disc eventually and that disc isn't happening this year. It's happening next year. Ah, uh, so, so it's digital wow. only. So while it may be finished digitally this year, the disc won't come out till next year. So I'm not going to get this until the disc comes out. So yeah. Hey, one less game to drain my wallet this year, at least. <laughs> that's Yeah, that's fair. I, I was actually, it's funny that you bring up Hitman because I was going to ask you if you've purchased part one yet. But... No, I actually did not even know that it came out. Oh, I was like, gotcha. wait, what? It's episodic? Oh, wait, what? The first... Wait, wait, what? Episode 1 Paris <laughs> is out already? Oh, okay. Okay, they say the full experience is 60 bucks. Okay. Uh, are you, I'm assuming you're reading up on it right now? Uh, yes. Okay. 60 bucks? Uh, no well, it just says, it says the full bucks. experience. Full experience in quotes. I really don't know at this point. Hmm, it's kind of sketchy. Okay. So, in hopes for for uh, the future of virtual reality gaming, PlayStation VR, uh, their vice president says that um, they want to make the PlayStation VR for mass market appeal. 
instead of an expensive resource consuming product like Oculus is. Uh, so that suggests that it will be cheaper than Oculus, but I really mm-hmm. don't know what you mean what they mean by cheaper because the Oculus is really expensive. You can be cheaper than Oculus, but you can still be really expensive. So the Oculus Rift costs six hundred bucks. You can still be five hundred bucks and still be like yeah. almost uh be like what, like one point eight times the price of the system that runs it? It's gonna be like five ninety five. Now, let me tell you this. If you want cheap virtual reality, and I see ads for this, um Samsung has this thing where you buy this headpiece and you stick your phone into it. And well, bam, you got VR. There's VR for you. Huh. But yeah, six hundred dollars. You could be five hundred bucks and still be like, oh, God damn! Like, did I just pay <laughs> the price? Did I just like literally pay the price of a of a P- to pay almost the price of a PS4 and Xbox One together just to get a piece of virtual reality? They also said that they're focusing on um, like smaller projects for this thing instead of like one big giant killer app project. That's good. That's definitely good. Yeah. Well, as I've said many, many times, the day that virtual reality gaming becomes really, really popular is the day that I am no longer gaming. The day that I see it have a practical use is going to be a little bit difficult. Because the thing is, is that you know, people are like, well, color TV happened, and this happened, and this happened. But the thing was is that in the case of color TV and better graphics, I didn't need special equipment to enjoy. I mean, well, yes, I had to, like, upgrade, you know, the TV to go to HD and that kind of stuff. But I didn't have to wear special equipment to experience it. Yeah. I think I think the moment you have to do you – know, the moment you have to wear special equipment – or meet very specific criteria for something to function properly, I think that's that's not going to work. Like, color TV, yeah, yeah. Like, HD TV, and, you know, in 4K, yeah, I have to go out and spend, like, a grand on a new 4K TV. But I didn't have to, like, you know, do what 3D TVs did, which is put on a pair of glasses to see the 3D effect. And, you know, in the case of the 3DS, well, the 3DS... I mean, they improved it slightly with the new 3DS, but you still can only, like, look at the screen from specific angles when the 3D is turned on. Mm -hmm. So when you put, like, that many requirements on top of that, well, there's a problem. In this case, VR, you have to buy something to wear on top of your head. And it's not like I can just look over to the person to my left and say, dude, are you seeing this? For all I know, he could have just already left the couch and went and got a drink and I'm just talking to my lamp instead. Anyways, yeah, there you go. That's why I don't. That's why I kind of have issues seeing VR getting really popular because you have to wear special equipment for it to work. Yeah, I agree. It's like if you, it's like a smartphone where instead of being the phone, you know, you have to wear a special com- computer attached to your belt. If you had to do that, I don't think smartphones are very popular because you have to wear a special, you have to wear a, a computer on you for your smartphone to work. If that happened, I don't think smartphones would have been that popular. But it's a phone, so there you go. Anyways, that's my view on it. <laughs> I agree with you. But yeah, VR. Ah, all that stuff that Sony, Sony, uh, Sony, Sony, so show, all that stuff that Sony showed at, at PlayStation Experience. I was like, yeah, I, I don't, I don't see VR. I don't see VR ticking with the enthusiast gamer at all with this kind of lineup. I don't see it ticking with mom and dads either because I didn't say anything in that lineup that particularly appealed to the regular middle class perfection family that lives in a gigantic house with a spiffy clean living room and magical TV. <laughs> because that's the demographic of all gamers. Ever really thought about how kind of interesting that was that the game, the average marketing that mark that Nintendo started and then everyone jumped on board where the average gaming, you know, family orientated living room is a middle class family in this colossal living room space that's perfectly clean and 
spotless and comes with a great TV and has all the room for everything. <laughs> I never thought that was kind of strange because I don't because most gamers I know don't have any setting for the game consoles that looks remotely like that. I definitely don't. Yeah, I don't know either. either. Not by a long shot. Yep. Okay. Well, that's all I have. I feel like I had something. But I can't remember what it was. I'm trying to remember. Uh, let's see. The Division is out. I was going to ask about that. Are, have you been playing The Division? Yeah, I have been. How um, is it? It's good. I like it a lot. Um, however... It should be noted that when I first started playing Destiny, I liked that a lot, too. So Right. That's the game I keep hearing comparisons with. Oh, it's like uh -huh. Destiny. Except it's different more, setting. Yeah, it's a lot more MMO-ish and a lot less first-person, or a lot less shooter-ish. Um, like, they have crafting. Um, I'm trying to think. There were a few things, a few other things that I thought was were notable. Um, there's this, there's a little bit of like a base building uh, thing going on, but it's it's not. It's more or less to unlock things. Um, gotcha. I, yeah, I'm trying to tread carefully. I don't want to say anything. Um, but it's it's just a little bit more MMO ish than Destiny. Okay. And a little less shooter ish. Um oh you know what you know what's MMO about it um is the map. You don't go it's not like Destiny where you go from map to map to map and you're fighting enemies based on what mission you're doing. You fight enemies that are around your level based on the area of the map that you're in. So, like, for example, you know in MMOs how you have an area that's meant for people who are on levels 1 to 5, and then there's an area meant for people who are levels 5 to 10. Yes. And et cetera, et cetera. It, it's very, Manhattan is set up very similar to that. So you can, you can actually go wherever you want. So, so the evil man said, you, recruit, you go to this level in this area. But sir, that's where we have the most casualties. Of course, that's why you're useless and therefore should go where all the useless <laughs> good guys are coming to kill us. <laughs> yeah. Yes, it's got, it's yes. really funny too because like at least in the case of regular MMOs, it's really funny that you fight, that like you would be like level, uh, say you're like level 70, you completely annihilate a level 50 dragon and then you get defeated by a level 110 squirrel. <laughs> yeah. Because logic. I Similar things will happen in the division. So it's well, of course you won't be shooting at dragons or squirrels, but you know what I mean. Yeah. This guy and, that once had a really powerful gun and gave you a hard time. You beat him as a new, but then the next recruit in the new level beats your ass. Yep. Logic. Also, the dark zone, um, that area that we played at E3, is the best part about that game easily. It's always it's super intense, and you have no idea if someone's about to destroy you or if they're about to help you. Oh joy! Yeah, my my personal favorite part about the division so far. Cool. Yeah. Um. But it's that. Oh, for those who like uh, Rocket League, Rocket League will be getting a basketball mode in anticipation of March Madness. Basket. Oh man, that sounds worse. That 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 sounds even <laughs> harder to score. Well, so so hockey was amazing. Um, soccer, of course, is amazing. Basketball looks difficult as all hell. Because the thing is, is that in basketball you're shooting it into the air mm -hmm. to go into a hoop, whereas in hockey and soccer there's a giant goal area. It yeah. just needs to go in. You know, it, like you can adjust the height as long as it's not too high, as long as it's not too far to the left or right. But in basketball, it's this lot of tiny little thing just hanging up there. Like, how do you shoot? And also, in I, basketball is a high-scoring game too. So, dang. I imagine you have to bounce it in there. Uh, 
Yeah, so I, it, that sounds really difficult, all right. Blocking a shot sounds really difficult. <laughs> yes. Your car will have you will get really good at jumping. Is there a game, is there going to be a mode in Rocket League where the, is there going to be a difficulty setting in Rocket League basketball that says Stafford Curry? God, I hope not. That would be brutal. It should. <laughs> Just so they have a better idea of what it's like to try and play against the guy. <laughs> it's not even fair. Yeah, no, nothing about that would be fair. <laughs> yep. Cool. Um, so, did yeah, a new story, so did a new story come back to you? Well, I think that was it, actually. Uh, coincidentally, another one came back to me as well. And that's the fact that... Uh, let me... Uh, um, the word on the streets, and we all know how, how that goes. Uh, word on the street is that General Rom Gears of War is going to be in Killer Instinct Season 3. Along with the Arbiter. Oh, well, I wouldn't be surprised. Season 3, they talked a lot about how Season 3 is going to feature guest characters, and I wouldn't be surprised to see General Rom, Ram, in there. Yeah. But, other than that, Anthony, I think I don't have any news. Okay. Then that means it's time to head into questions and comments. And oh my goodness, we actually have questions and comments to answer. All right. All right, first one up. Okay, so we talked about how Disney was not going to bet E3. Um, oh, okay. So Bronson, Bronson and I talked about uh, Disney is not, Disney along with Activision and a couple other companies are not going to be at E3 this year, continuing the potential Exodus theme for E3. Mm-hmm. So, uh, what's the hap says, no Disney? So no new Infinity talk? That's like crack to me, man. I have spent so much money on Infinity characters. And I don't blame you because if I was a little guy, or heck, I do this with Amiibos actually. So, even as an <laughs> adult, yeah, I could totally see the appeal of like buying all those little figures that you can put into video games. Yeah, but they're pretty rad. I, I have been also purchasing Amiibos lately. It's kind of cool when you, it's like one of the reasons why I walk by the Disney booth is they actually would put a lot of their, um, of their, uh, Disney Infinity, uh, figures on display. Just so you can have an idea of how many there are. Oh, that's pretty cool. That's, that, because that's a lot of money right there. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of which, your mama likes me says, holy crap. Disney has made so much money on Infinity, and every time I go to the mall, I buy more. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Ties back to what I said earlier. Mm -hmm. uh, Jay Chen uh, FTW says, OMG, I spent so much time working on my house in the toy hub. LOL. It's like The Sims. LOL. In fact, I just <laughs> remembered I got to move some stuff around. What is toy hub? Is I'm assuming it's a game mode. Yeah, in Disney Infinity. I know that in that game they have like a little area where you can just make stuff. But uh, I thought I thought that was called the sandbox. I don't know. I'm trying to look this up. Yeah, it's a Disney Infinity thing. I typed in just Toy Hub, it apparently gave me a store name. So huh. <laughs> there you go. Uh. JJN FTW also says, did I hear correctly? Mass Effect pushed back? Jeez, that was on my Christmas list. Mass Effect hasn't even, they have not released a date for Mass Effect. They did. It's now quarter 1, 2017. Oh, okay. I, well, so as, far was, as, a, as far as a firm definitive date, no. But it was supposed yeah, to be. Yeah, that's what, what I meant. Yeah, okay. In that case, yeah, no. Um, it was supposed to come out holiday season this year and now it's being pushed to Q1 next year. My yeah. guess, yeah, and it's hard. And I, I was gonna guess March, and then I was like, "Well, Mass Effect Two came out in January of all things, and Mass Effect Three came out in March." But Bioware games ten, but Met Dragon Age Two also came out in March, so maybe Mass Effect Three, or sorry, Mass Effect Andromeda may also come out in March. 
By the way, more random trivia news. Apparently, people apparently scientists have discovered the, discovered a new furthest galaxy ever found. Huh, nice. I know a lot of you don't care, but it's Mass Effect. <laughs> it's interesting. The galaxy is called GN-Z11, the most distant known galaxy in the universe. Space. Cool. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna brute steer this back in because random trivia overtime. Um, yeah, like to me, it's like, well, I guess that kind of helps because that's one less game that will punch my wallet this year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not to mention, I know when it comes to Bioware games, I don't know why. I keep talking about how I don't like them as much. I keep talking about how I'm disappointed in them, but I keep buying them. You're not the yeah. only one, Mr. Toph. It's like, like I'm so disappointed in Bioware, and I have all the reason to stop giving a shit, but I still give a shit. I don't even, I don't know why either. It's just, ugh. It maybe just the, does. Maybe that's, maybe that's how Call of Duty people feel. They know the game kind of is mediocre, but they still buy it anyways. Okay, J Monster says. LOL, a sale on Wii games? They still make those? LOL. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was my response too, because, okay, so what happened in the news story is that Nintendo has, like, Nintendo Selects. So you remember those red oh, yeah. Wii games that they take, like, big name games and yeah. finally price cut them, like, five years after? Yeah, they're, they're doing it again, and one of those games was uh, Super Mario Galaxy 2, which I sit here and I'm like, really? Towards the end of the Wii U lifespan, you. Get a Wii game and discount it to twenty bucks. Can you even find a physical copy of that game anymore to be worth <laughs> discounting to twenty bucks? Like really? Yeah. And even then, and even then it know. wouldn't work. Well, yeah, it would work on Wii U actually. It is backwards compatible. Um. Yeah, I thought the same thing. I was like, wait, what? Like Wii games? Really? What? That's weird. <laughs> <And> next, <laughs> our next comment is from Dude Perfect. Is it just me or is E3 not even important anymore? Got people flaking it left and right. I think it's, it's I, I think it's losing its importance. But it's still important. It's for still now. important for now. We don't know what's gonna I don't know what's gonna be like in two years. Uh but I would say it's not as important as it used to be because it used to be E3 was the place where you got all super mega awesome gaming announcements. Mm. Yeah, I typed our show name in there. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that's where you got your big announcements. That's where Zelda Twilight Princess was announced. That's when the Xbox, that's when Xbox, that's when Microsoft came out and said, guess what? Xbox 360, we're going to put it out before PS3. Oh, and hey guys, Halo 3. <laughs> that was where that was where the Wii was shown. That was where Sony came out and said, "Hey guys, PlayStation." That was where you know that was where that was back when the public was actually allowed into E3. Actually, I'm just referencing a lot of stuff from back then. Well, they also, I mean, if if you still question the importance of E3, look at what was announced last year. I mean, Horizons was announced. Uh, I mean, they weren't announced, but you got your first trailers from uh, Final Fantasy VII and from... Uh, well, uh, technically, this isn't your first trailer either, but we hadn't heard from The Last Guardian in a very, very long time. Um, and then they, Sony kind of showed everybody, hey, this is still happening. Um, I think... Yeah, I think what that difference is, though, is that those are press conferences, not the actual show floor. Well, I mean, so, Nick, and so that's even that's actually even more uh, in my like in my argument that E three is still important because one of the major things that people look towards when E three comes around is the announcements from the big three companies: Nintendo, Microsoft, Sony. Yeah, but they can also do those announcements at other times. You are correct. Yeah, because but they don't. I, I mean, they don't currently at least yeah. nintendo <laughs> nintendo they don't even show up anymore they just i mean they have a booth there and they let you demo some stuff but they but all their big announcements is through a video now 
Yeah. And, you know, and Microsoft does their event at one place and Sony does their event at another place, but it's not like they set up a stage at E3 itself inside the building. Yeah, that's true. So, and, you know, PlayStation has PlayStation experience. Wouldn't it, wouldn't it seem like the audience cares more when you invite your fans in and show them stuff that they waited in line for hours for to see? Mm-hmm. Yeah, E3 you're also, right. E3 also used to be public. I don't know. Did you, like E3 could like could E3 be it's on its way back up the day they allow the public back in? I don't know. But you know, E3 is now more like a professional event than um, this big thing that kind of very much was where you went to for the biggest news all the time. Because now the biggest news doesn't always happen at E3 anymore. Yeah, you're right. You are right. Uh, I mean, like, it makes it easier for, like, some of us because, hey, I don't have to wait as long as a line. I don't have to fight through as huge a <laughs> crowd. With the exception of Nintendo. Like, that's the thing, too. Like, Nintendo is kind of a little stuck in the past, and that's sometimes a good thing because the lines at Nintendo were as long as they usually are. But Forza 6 had no line. And I'm like, okay, good enough. That's the um, other thing, too, is that E3 may still be important, but this, as far as the attendance of last year... Like, I know it was your first E3, but I can definitely for sure tell you that compared to the year before, which I which I went to, oh, man, that, like, last year, was it was a little empty. Yeah. It just, it just didn't seem very crowded, which is great, because you get to play a lot of stuff that you don't have to wait nine, nine hours for, but it was still kind of, it was still worrying. Because E3 must be an extremely expensive event for companies, and if you don't have enough people looking at your stuff, then why spend all that money? Yeah, there is no point at that point. Yeah, because some, like, you know, it's like, oh, well, they got millions of dollars. Yeah, but, like, making all these sets and stages and prepping all these demos, that's not cheap. Like, imagine how expensive that Battleborn statue was for 2K to make. Yeah, no joke. And that's a one-of-a-kind statue, too. Like, that, that that's, a, that's a custom-made giant thing. It's not like they just sell that. But we'll see what happens. I'm actually looking forward to having fewer lines this year, I hope. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> easier to park, but I don't think that's going to make it any easier to get through downtown L.A. Because, well, downtown L.A. Yeah. Freaking traffic. That won't change. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, that will never change. <laughs> like, in Los Angeles, it's really funny because on the way back home, at least when Bronson and I were heading back home, uh, we found out, we, we drove by a new freeway that was under construction. Apparently, that is the number one way to solve um, traffic issues in SoCal is to build more freeway to get clogged up in. Uh, anyways. Uh, was that our last uh, comment? No, it's not, actually. I, just okay, tried, I was like, ah, uh, where was I? Oh, yes, here. You're good. B -b -b Boom! Says, too many of them, I guess. Too much hype. Just like how we have to hear about another freaking iPhone every year. I'm trying to remember what this was about. <laughs> uh, okay, I do not remember what it was about. Well then. Yeah, no, we get to just talk about hype then, I guess. Hype is I, only bad. Like, it's like when... another freaking iPhone every year, so it has to be something that was related to something that comes out every single year. Was what Bros and I so talked about. I don't Call remember. It could be, but I don't remember him and I, he and I talking Call of Duty last week. Too much hype. Hmm. Maybe you guys had a conversation about the division. Yeah, I, I don't remember. I know, I know that I know they talk. That they talked a lot about Street. I know Bremen and Ross talked a lot about Street Fighter, but yeah, I'm really sorry. I do not. I do not remember. <laughs> what, what, I do not remember everything that happened in episodes. So um, it happens. I, I cannot pinpoint what that comment is referring to. So I apologize. And that is all of our comments. All right. That that was good. Keep them coming, guys. We we thank been you for really, sending comments. Yeah, we've been really appreciating hearing from you guys and being able to respond and everything. Um, well, is there anything else you wanted to say, or shall I uh, go on with our 
podcastly advertisements. Cue the ad reel. <laughs> All right. All right, guys. Well, once again, thanks for joining us tonight. Please check out some of our content on thegameraccess.com. It's awesome. Almost as good as everything that you just heard on this podcast. Almost. Uh, the only thing that would make those better was if Anthony and I narrated through everything. But uh, alas, everything is still fantastic. Uh, in addition to that, check us out on Twitch. Everything with the stockies has been a little bit slow lately, but it'll pick up here in uh, what is today is Saturday, right? Yes. So by the time you guys will be re- hearing this, we will the Shiitakes will be on that night. So check us out tonight, I guess. That sounds really weird because I'm speaking in the future. Um, in addition oh, to we that, are in the future. Yeah. What are you talking about? <laughs> in addition to that, check out the Senpais as well. Just follow us on Twitch, follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, and stalk us regularly. Did I get everything? I uh, think um, look, I'm going to throw out this social media reel. Okay, so like us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter. Follow us on twitch.tv slash thegameraccess. And, and on our Twitch, the Gamer Access, if you would like to donate to us, we do have a donation button below the video player. So, uh, yeah, if you want to donate for anything, by all, by all means, do so. And I think that's our social media reel. All right. Well, as, uh, on that note, you guys have a good week. We will see you next week. Peace. Bye, all.